Notion databases give you the building blocks to create all sorts of systems and workflows. Plan sprints for your engineering team, track job candidates throughout your recruiting process, or even create a simple repository for all of your company meeting notes. Put simply, you can think of databases as intelligent file cabinets. They can contain hundreds, even thousands of pages, and they help you keep similar information organized in the same place. You can add a database as its own page or through the block drop-down menu. On a new page, select any of the six database layout options to get started. You can visualize your data in a table, board, list, timeline, calendar, and gallery. Every one of these options boasts the same features. The only thing that varies is the way the information is displayed. For demonstration purposes, we're going to build an editorial calendar for the marketing team. So let's select the layout we prefer. In this case, we're going to add a table. Here, you'll see two options. You can select a data source to link content from an existing database in your workspace, or you can start from scratch by clicking New Database. Let's use the New Database button. We'll talk more about linking to existing data sources later in this video. Here is our brand new empty database, which we can name at the top. This particular database will be used by the marketing team to store editorial pieces, work on them with other team members, and show their progress from first draft to publication. By default, each database type already contains a certain structure. In the table layout, you'll find a column to the left called name and a column next to it called tags. The first column is where you can add and name the entry stored in this database. In this case, every row represents an editorial piece. To add an entry, place your cursor under Name and type in its title. Here, we'll name this entry Tips and Tricks for Acme Pros, a blog article that is currently in the works. Let's also add two more content pieces that your team is working on, one per line. In databases, each row can be opened as a page. To do so, hover your mouse over any title you added, then click on Open. A database entry is actually a page in itself where you can store all the content you're used to storing in a regular Notion page. In this case, you could use this space to write up a first draft and add a section for the article's visuals. Every database page contains this property section at the top. Properties are pieces of information about each database entry, and they can come in many shapes or forms, like text, numbers, dates, or people you'll see the same properties appear for every page you store in this database. The more properties you add, the more options you'll have for organizing the pages in this database. To add a new property to your database, click on Add Property, give your new property a name, then hover your cursor under Property Type and pick the property you want. In this case, we'll pick Select. Again, you're not just adding this property to one page, you're adding it to every page stored in the database. Since we want this select property to indicate status, let's add a few options such as idea, in progress, in review, and published. Simply type in the name of the content type and click on create or hit enter. To add another option, repeat the same steps. Should you want to modify your tags, just click on the three dot icon next to each. Use this menu to rename the tag or change its color. This Tags property is here by default, allowing us to attach multiple keywords to the project. Now, we can add the option of specifying who will be editing the article. This time, let's select a Person property. Clicking inside the empty rectangle next to it will open up a drop-down listing out every member of your Notion workspace. Select the person or people involved. If you can't find someone right away, look them up in the search bar. These people will also be receiving a notification in their Notion apps that you tag them on this page. Let's also add another person property to show the writer or writers of the piece. Other possible properties could be date properties to show the project's deadline and publication date, as well as a URL property where you can paste the final URL. We can now click out of the page to go back to our database. In the case of table databases, each property is assigned its own column, as you can see here. Note that in the case of table databases, you can click on the property's name and this menu will show up, allowing you to rename, edit, or even delete your property. You can also add a brand new property to your table by scrolling to the right of your table and clicking on this plus sign. 
What's more, you can change the order of appearance of your properties by manually dragging them around, like so. Click into another database entry, and you'll see your same list of properties appear at the top. Again, you can enter the information like we just did, and use this page to store everything regarding the article. Interview notes, brainstorms, or again, a first draft. You get the gist, right? This is what an editorial calendar could look like with more entries. As this database grows, you'll probably find the need to sort your data, filter it, and perhaps visualize it in a different layout. In other words, you'll want to create different views of the same database, each of which will serve a different purpose. You can do this by adding more views to your database. As an example, you might want to plot your database entries in a board that groups them by their status. This would allow you and your teammates to keep track of what content is being worked on, what needs review, and what's already been published. You could also add another board layout, this time grouping entries by writer. Or add a list which only shows content that has been published. Another option would be to show your content cards in a calendar, where every content card is displayed inside its corresponding deadline date. Finally, you could add a timeline to visualize every piece of content over a certain period of time and get an efficient bird's eye view of your team's ongoing projects. In order to make conscious and thoughtful decisions, you need to clearly see and understand your data, and databases allow you to do exactly that. Every view has its own menu that you can access by clicking on the three-dot icon nested at the top right. There, you can tweak the way you want your view to look, pick the properties you want to preview and the ones you'd rather hide, and apply filters and sorts. Now, remember that when you add a Notion database to a page, you are also given the option to use an already existing one. There will be times when this option will make more sense to you than creating a new database from scratch. To do so, place your cursor inside your page, type the fort slash key, followed by the database view of your choice, then enter. The same menu as last time will pop up. Now, instead of selecting new database, We'll pick a data source from the list of our already existing data sources, either by selecting it from the list here or looking it up from the search bar. If you want to use an already existing view, you can select that here as well. Editing the view here would not edit the original database, but editing the content would. And if you wanted to use the same database structure, but create a completely new view, you could do that too, using the View Options menu here. Here, we'll add a filter to indicate we only want to see meetings held within the marketing team. If you ever need to view an inline block with more detail, simply click these arrows to view it as a full page, and you'll be welcomed with a functional, shareable, beautiful database page. To go back to the block you just came from, just use the breadcrumb at the top of the page. Or to go to the original data source, just click on the database title like so. Finally, just like any other block type in Notion, you can move an inline database by selecting the block handle and then dragging and dropping it where you want it to live, on the page or elsewhere in your workspace. Voila! By now, you should be able to create your own custom database from a blank Notion page and understand the powerful potential of database views. To learn everything about the latter, pay this video a visit. We see it as the second part of this introductory video. The more you learn about Notion databases, the more you'll be able to understand the wonderful things they can do for you and your team. We can't wait to see what you create.